Hi, so it's been a while. A-levels have been a little bit crazy, but today I'm back with a video about doing your very best in the language GCSEs. So I did two languages at GCSE. I took Spanish, which I got a 9 and 93% in, and Polish, which is my native language, which I got 94% in and 9. And I never did any like formal lessons for Polish. I just like studied it with my mom, you know, um, but I did have like Spanish lessons in school because it was one of my chosen subjects. So for vocabulary, this is one of the most important things, okay? You need to like, in order to like score high on a GCSE language, you need to like actually know the language, right? And the best way to do this is through learning the vocabulary. So personally, what I did is I found a pre-made set on Quizlet that had like all of the words that you know, the exam board specified and don't make your own set. I started doing this the summer before GCSEs and it's just like really not worth it because there's at least 200 words in each unit, probably a lot more. And you know, if there's eight units, then that's so much work, you know, and you should spend that time doing something else like practice papers or whatever. Um, so yeah, Find your pre-made sets on Quizlet and then export them to Anki. And that's really useful because that's like the software where you like basically go through flashcards. And if you like, I don't know, personally for me, it's better than paper flashcards, but you do you, you know? Um, if paper flashcards are the thing you like, then go for it, you know? Um, but yeah, try to do this every day, maybe like 50 words a day until it becomes like this like reflex, you know, you see the word and you understand it because ideally you want to know those core words as well as you know English. I know this is like an ask because this is like a big ask because you're learning this language in like two years and you're expected to know so much but still just try to do it as often as possible. And if you keep it like really frequent, but not too many words, then you'll be really prepared for the actual exam. And you know, you won't have to cram before like I did. <laughs> um, another thing you can do is do Duolingo every day just to like keep up with the language, even if it's just like one exercise or like five minutes a day, just do it, you know? Another thing you could do is watch movies and TV shows. This is my personal favorite. There's tons of like, um, there's a lot of Spanish language, like TV shows and movies on Netflix. I don't know about French and German. I'm sure there's a couple, but my personal favorite was Elite. It's so good, at least the first three seasons. After that, it goes a bit, but still doesn't matter. Anyway, um, on Amazon Prime, you can go there and you can like, for uh, like the most popular TV shows like The Office, they offer it in like other languages as well. So you can change it to like Spanish audio, Spanish subtitles, and it'll be dubbed, which isn't great, but still like, it's really good if you want to watch something familiar, but do it in a different language. Okay, so personally, the speaking is my favorite part. It's like the part of the exam that you have the most control over. So you should focus on this and aim to get as many points as possible on the speaking because if you max out the speaking, then you can pretty much max out the rest of the exam. So my main tip is plan for the general conversation, right? Because, okay, the AQA, like, that's my exam board that I did. I don't know what about like at Excel or all the other ones, but AQA specifically, I don't think there's like a list of specific general conversation questions that your teacher has to like, you know, ask you. So you can write your own and like give it to them and prepare your answers in advance. One thing I have to say when doing this is make sure you cover all your bases, you know, cover all the topics that like fall under the theme. Otherwise you might lose marks for content. So just make sure. And when you choose which theme to like be your main theme that you know the questions about beforehand, for that one, choose your like worst one, like the worst theme. Um, for me, I think it was like the environment or something like that, like the really complex one. So choose the one you're worst at because then you can like control the questions and make sure the examiner doesn't ask you anything that's like super complicated or that you don't know how to answer, right? So yeah, just do that because genuinely it's actually such a good way to like score solid marks. 
so for the role play, what you want to do is focus on accuracy. You know, you want to have simple but perfect grammar because they really, from what I remember, they don't mark you very much on content on the role play. So as as long as you hit the points, you're fine. You know, you don't have to add complexity. You don't have to say si tuviera, cuando sea, blah, blah, blah. Stuff like that you don't need. Keep it short and sweet and like to the point. For the photo card, you do have to focus on the complexity. Try to use different tenses. Obviously keep it like on the main tense, but make sure that in the three questions that they do give you cover each and every tense. Try to use like si tuviera, cuando sea, stuff like that. I don't know what the equivalents are in French and German or like whatever language you're doing, but try to like have some complex language in there. So use your fancy verbs, use your like conjunctions, your opinions, comparatives, stuff like that just to like really impress the examiner because on your photo card you are judged for like content so for reading and listening um personally i like studying for these the most i feel like it's kind of pretty easy so the main thing you want to do is to do like tons of practice papers you know these are just the best and i know a lot of people underestimate the power of practice papers they just think that oh you know you're just doing practice questions, but they're like genuinely crazy helpful because you don't just have the active recall, you know, but you're also learning about what the examiner might ask you. And so you will like learn the words that aren't on the vocab list or they are on there, but like you don't really see them as much in the textbook. So for example, for Spanish, the verb aumentar, that was in a lot of the past papers and practice questions that I did, but I saw it on the vocab list like once and practice papers really help you like really learn what the examiner's like and what they might ask you about and i feel like that's super important this is sort of like a niche tip but stop using subtitles and i don't just mean like you know when you're watching a spanish video or when you're watching a french video but just generally don't use subtitles because in the actual exam you will not have subtitles, you know? You will listen to the audio twice and that's it. You know, if you can't hear something or it sounds kind of muffled, you can't really do anything about it other than ask the examiner to repeat it and they'll probably say no because you're not really allowed to do that. And so what you should do to practice this is just turn off subtitles whenever you're watching a movie, a TV show, a YouTube video, because you really need to train yourself to just hear things, right? And not just read things. Okay, another thing you should do is actually use your reading time, right? Because right at the beginning of the listening paper, you'll have like 10, 15 minutes, probably less than that, five to 10 minutes to like go through the paper and be like, okay, well, this is this in Spanish, this is this in English, and just write down the translation to any word you find. And another thing you should do is write down synonyms, right? Because Examiners aren't stupid, you know, they're not gonna write down a question in Spanish and then have someone say those exact words in Spanish, right? Because that makes no sense. Like anyone could guess that, right? So you should try to write down synonyms because, you know, those are the words that they're more likely to use and that'll just like help you. Okay, so my number one tip for the writing is just lie, you know, make it up. There is no need for anything you say to be true. Just become a completely different person. It is okay to lie, you know, and make up stories to just fit the question or to be able to use more complex language. It makes it so much simpler than thinking of like an actual thing that happened to you in order to be able to write about it. You know, the examiner isn't actually going to check. Just tailor it to the question and make stuff up so that you can use that like complex language. So another thing you should do is focus on the translation because in the writing exam, this is pretty much, they're pretty much the easiest marks you'll get because it's just really, most of the vocab is really easy, but it's also pretty easy to lose marks on accuracy as well, or if you use the wrong word, or if you get mixed up. What I'd advise you to do is just do every single translation possible. I think I did every single one for Spanish, including the specimen ones, do those as well. They're a little bit harder than normal, which is good, you know, you're challenging yourself. Another benefit of focusing on translation 
isn't just that, you know, you score more points, but it's also because you get to practice your grammar without having to worry about like content and structure, you know, because you get to practice conjugating the most common verbs, you practice spelling the most common words, and you just learn which words they're the most likely to ask you about, and that's really useful. So exam technique is the most important thing for the writing, and trust me, like, I know this because for my Polish, which I learned, like, pretty much on my own, it was just me and my mom, I got 51 out of 60 on Polish, on the writing, which is, it's, like, still pretty high, but on the Spanish, where I had a teacher who, like, you know, she knew everything about the exam, and I got 57 out of 60 on that, and that's, like, a 10 percentage point difference, like, that's crazy, you know, um, and especially considering the fact that Polish is my native language, so... It doesn't matter how much of the language you know, you just have to learn the exam technique. Try to like plan your answer to add as much complexity as possible. Personally, what I did is I wrote a little like checklist of the different things on like every single question. And usually the things I had on that list were like comparatives. So like this is better than this. This is less fun than this. Reasons. So because every time they ask you to give an opinion, points for a reason will be in the mark scheme. You always have to give a reason, and especially if they're asking you about like other people's opinions. This is like really Spanish specific, but you know those things that are like si tuviera million dólares, or cuando sea mayor, stuff like that, like the conditional, the the other tenses that I've forgotten their names for, but it's fine. I still know a little bit of Spanish. Yeah, those are really good because they're super complex. Like that's like borderline A-level language and you should be striving for that if you want a grade nine, you know? And yeah, I've already talked about like opinions, other people's opinions, they're so important. And try to not repeat, you know, me gusta, me gusta, me gusta. Say, you know, me encanta, me flipa, me chifla. Other words are really useful and synonyms are really good. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Those are all of my tips for like doing well on the language GCSE. Um, hopefully this helped you. I know GCSEs are like a while away, unless you're doing them in November, which I don't know when they are in November, but they might be like tomorrow. So good luck if you're doing your language GCSEs in November. But if you're doing them in May and like June, then good luck. I wish you very